guys, it's Jane and it's Wednesday today. Top five Wednesday, not just any Wednesday, of course. It is the last Wednesday of the year. And so top five Wednesday today is my top five books of 2014. Now, I have really, really, really been thinking about this and my list has actually changed. Uh, people have been kicked out and others have been kicked in. Well, one in the last 24 hours. As always, these books are in no particular order. Um, I That was the other thing. I, I almost nearly, nearly went for an order today, but it's, just, it's too hard. There are two that are set in Australia two that are set in the Middle East and um, one that's set in some sort of fictional version of the US. So that's not too bad for diversity, is it? That's not too bad. Okay, four of these I've talked about before, so I'm going to zip through them pretty quickly. Number one, Ale of the Unseen. That probably isn't any surprise to anybody who's been watching my channel. Um, Ale of the Unseen by G. Willow Wilson. It is a fantasy adventure set in a unnamed emirate. It's a, it's a cracking good read. Lots of really interesting questions addressed in that. I've actually made a couple of videos about that. I'll link that below. Number two is Persepolis. This is a graphic memoir uh, by Ma Jane Satrapi um, where she uh, retells the story of her childhood in Iran during the um, Islamic Revolution. I got volume two from the library just the other day. I might I might just um, I might just sneak this into 2014 if I if I if I find a spare hour this afternoon it could happen. Uh, even if you don't read uh, comics as a rule um, feel free to make an exception for this one number three Carpenteria by Alexis Wright this is probably um, the most substantial novel that I read this year um, it is a, a, Alexis Wright is an Aboriginal author and um, the style of the the literary style of this is unlike anything I've ever read it is such an amazing book um, about life in Australia um, as an Aboriginal person, Aboriginal identity, and um, and of course it, it it doesn't speak for all Aboriginal experience because Aboriginal experience is very different depending on where you live and what sort of what sort of community that the the people live in. This is set in a um, a mining slash coastal rural town in um, the outback. Uh, for 2015, um, Tanya from List Obsessed Reader and I uh, are planning to do a buddy read of her latest book, um, which is called The Swan Book. Uh, we haven't quite worked out exactly when we're going to do that, but um, when we figure that out, I'll let you know. And if, if you want to join in, um, reading uh, Alexis Wright with us, that'd be great. Okay, number four, Empire of Bones by N.D. Wilson. This is a complete change of pace. This is a middle grade uh, fantasy adventure, which doesn't feel like it fits on a list with uh, Carpenteria and Ale of the Unseen and Persepolis. Well, maybe it does. It does in my brain. This was amazing it's the third in a series there is another one coming out I made a video about this it's 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 actually nothing much like Narnia but I feel like I have those feelings about it Narnia is a bit dated now and all of that sort of thing um, this is not at all dated it's very very contemporary but that whole feeling of being swept up into a whole other world that is what I felt reading this book it's an amazing book N.D. Wilson's Empire of Bones. Okay, number five is this one. The Songs of Jesse Adams by Peter McKinnon. Um, I did actually uh, mention this really briefly in a video earlier in the year, but um, I've never talked about it at any length. And partly the reason for that is, is I'm 
I feel a bit torn about talking about it, uh, not because I don't like the book, but because I have some sort of vague vested, in, vested interest in my other life when I'm not making YouTube videos. One of the seven million things that I do is that I'm actually a director of an independent press, and this is one of our books. Um, so... Yeah, it's, that's a bit awkward. It's a, it's a not-for-profit press and I do not get paid, so there is no money <laughs> involved in me promoting this. But it still feels a bit awkward. But here we go. The Songs of Jessie Adams. I couldn't leave it out because this is such an amazing book. Um, it's Peter McKinnon. Is, this is a debut novel. Um, he's a Melbourne author. And um, this book is a retelling of the life of Jesus, um, uh, uh, if if Jesus had been born in uh, Australia uh, in the Vietnam War era, it's, well, no, not born in the Vietnam War era. It's it's played in the Vietnam War era, so um, he's in his you know late twenties or whatever when 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 the when the um, action is is going on. And he's a singer in a rock band. For such a well known story, and Peter McKinnon actually hues quite closely to the the incidents that are recorded in the Bible, for such a well known story, it is so surprising. I just found it so thought provoking and surprising. And even though I knew kind of what was gonna happen, clearly, it 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 just real. It was really. It really drew me in. It was really engrossing. It was an amazing read. It's not a perfect book, but it is certainly one of the best books that I've read this year. Uh, it is actually available on Amazon now. That took quite a time, but it's now there, and you can get it in an e copy of it through all the major um, providers if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, the songs of Jesse Adams. Um, is is something that is unlike anything that I've ever read and um, it's it's yeah it's in my top five that is my top five books for 2014 I will talk to you again in 2015 bye <laughs>